Well, good morning or good day, depending on how you're viewing this. I certainly want to welcome you to our Sunday service, if you will. Um, it's going to be Sunday, um, March 22nd. We're into springtime. But you know, I don't know if you have noticed, but there are some different things besides all of the rescheduling, postponing, um, having our plans blown up, if you will. There are some other things I've noticed lately. That every morning the sun has been rising. I don't know if you've noticed it, but it has. The birds have also been singing every morning. Once again today, I could hear them, and they were having all kinds of songs and fun. It's just like clockwork. Every single day this is happening. Now, obviously, we know these things occur, but there's something very important about those and some other observations, too. Kind of like the grass. Do you notice it's beginning to green up? Yeah, we'll be mowing the lawn probably in about three, four weeks. Isn't that exciting? Um, bushes are beginning to push their leaves forward, and you're seeing the greenery come out now. Uh, spring flowers are blooming. We've got daffodils out in places, or they're about to. They're, they're pushing forth the hyacinths and the tulips. Maybe even seen some just to our south, some forsythia that's actually beginning to burst forth on some things. So life is returning to a dead world. Winter is like a dead world. There's just nothing growing, really, and we're seeing life come back. Winter is over. <laughs> Not that we had a lot of winter, but it does appear to be over. And that's true even if it does snow tomorrow. Because if it does snow, it's spring snow. It will melt. However, as we're settling into this new life routine that we have, one that, of course, is very different, it may actually feel like we're heading into winter. I mean, think about it. Everything that you had planned, everything you had scheduled, regardless of whether it was school or whether it was events, whether it was sports, whether it was ministry, whether it was just going to visit someone or whatever it is, those plans have been either postponed, canceled, or perhaps they've gone online like the schools. We wonder, how long will this go on? How bad will it be? And to be honest, no one knows. And it sometimes scares us. Even the experts, you listen to different talking heads on TV, and I'll tell you, they're very different in what they're saying. We don't know. That's the whole thing. So many ways, it's kind of like winter. I want you to think back to last fall when we're heading into winter and everyone wanted to know what kind of a winter would we have? How much snow and how cold would it be? Lots of forecasts were made. And some of you, if you're familiar with my background in meteorology, I too was kind of curious and for what I could see, I was looking at it and what I felt was that it was probably going to be an average temperature winter and we would probably have average to above average snow. It would be stormy, but it would be moist overall. Well, it was moist. There were storms. Certainly there wasn't much snow because it was very mild. But again, no one really knows how long a winter season is going to last, if you will, how cold it's going to be and how much snow we'll get. But we do know one thing, and that is we do know that after every single winter, spring will come. It always comes. Some years a little earlier than others, but it always comes. Spring is always going to be here. New life will emerge once again. Just as for you and I right now, we may feel we're entering into a winter season where there's less life, if you will, less social life, less, less things to do than there was. It's like my life is so different. We may feel like we're entering into a cold winter season that's uncertain. But one thing is certain. And that is that spring is coming. New life will emerge once again. And I know this not just because I'm trying to be positive. I know it because God is faithful. And he sits on the throne this morning as the sovereign Lord of all. And I also know that he is my shepherd. And we'll look at the Psalm 23 today. You're probably familiar with it. If you do have a Bible nearby or your phone app or whatever it is that you use, if you want to, you can take that out and look at it. And perhaps you can just listen because you're so familiar with it. But I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version here this morning. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, this is perhaps the most famous passage of Scripture in the world. People know this. People have heard about it. It's on cards. It's all over. And it's spoken and brings many, much great comfort to many people in times of sorrow and distress, especially during funerals. But it also speaks to our situation to that. I want you to think back two weeks. What was your week like? What had it been like? What events and activities were you looking forward to doing? Oh, I'm sure there was a whole list of things that you had. Your whole month of March was probably filled up, if you will. I know we had some busy activities. They were I was looking forward to, obviously, regular services and planning towards Easter. Looking forward to the, the Providence Place Ministry at the, for the senior residents. For Answers Night and Thursdays and, and musicals, and because that which our daughter was in and other kids in our youth and so forth were in as well. Um, looking at sports practices and tournaments and hearing about those. And, and of course, there were other plans for showers and everything and, and school, K through 12, heading towards the end of the third quarter and late, getting to the end of that. And college course, spring break, and looking forward to realizing that, hey, at the beginning of May, college is the semester is over. But now, it's all postponed. It's all canceled or streamed online. It's a whole new world, and you know what? It happened really fast. Proverbs 16, 9 tells us that in his heart man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. You see, we think we know what will come, and we make plans, and sometimes and many times those plans do okay. But we really don't know the future, and that's why we can be surprised sometimes. But the Lord is never surprised. He knows all that there is to know, and he knows about everything. He knows what's coming, the past and the future. He is all knowing or omniscient, and he will guide us accordingly. And he does. So we know that he leads those steps. He was not surprised by what has occurred, and he is still with us, as the psalmist tells us. But first, I want you to look at those first three verses of the Psalm Psalm twenty-three. It describes the life of a, of a sheep under the care of the shepherd. And of course, we as believers, we're the sheep. That's the imagery. We're the ones who believe in God and trust in Him. The life of a believer is very good, it says. There's green pasture, there's quiet waters, righteous paths. What is it there to like about having provision, security, rest and peace, comfort? I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful picture. These are all the comforts that one could possibly need. In many ways, that was our life a few weeks ago. I mean, maybe it wasn't as comfortable as it could be. Maybe there were some issues going on in certain places and certain people's lives and possibly in yours. But you know what? There was a level of comfort. Certainly was a level of peace and security because it's what we knew to do. It's what we're familiar with. But gone are the green pastures, the quiet waters of rest and peace. We're now in an unknown, even scary world. We've entered the valley of the shadow of death. It's a valley of deep darkness. But we look back at the psalm, verse 4, it tells us that we enter into this, shadow, into this valley. But it tells me also that I will fear no evil. Why? Because it says that the Lord, my shepherd, is with me. He does not point the way for us and say, Hey, Terry, I want you to go here and I'll meet you on the other side. He doesn't do that. He enters this unscary, uncertain, excuse me, this uncertain, scary time with us and knows the way through this valley and out of this valley. 
The imagery here comes from Israel, but we can imagine it going out west if you've ever traveled out into west and just some of the canyon lands that we have, like in Utah and Arizona, thinking of the Grand Canyon, thinking of um, you know, Bryce Canyon or even Arches National Park or Palo Duro Canyon in Texas or something like that. And you want to go for a hike in there and they advise you to take plenty of water, like maybe two liters of water per person for even just a three mile hike. Well, it's the same thing here in Israel. There are good areas for pasture, but they have to, the sheep and the flocks have to be moved from one pasture to another so they don't destroy one. We do similar things here with livestock. And sometimes to get from one pasture land to another, you had to cross through kind of like a, a wadi or a canyon land or these dry, arid, very hot valleys. These valleys were very steep, they were shadowy, they were rocky. Um, they're very, very, they can get very hot and very dry in the summertime. One can dehydrate very quickly. And so you must take plenty of water with you. If you don't know where you're going, you don't want to be in these lands without water because death can occur very quickly in places like this. But the sheep had to go through this. And the sheep would go and they would trust the shepherd. He had a staff and a rod to guide them. And he would, do, he would guide the sheep with them and he would protect against predators who might be lurking in the crevices and the caves that are present in a, in a valley like this, watching, watching for one wayward sheep or something. But the shepherd would protect and would guide and lead, and so they would continue to follow because they're not going to fear the evil that is present. The shepherd, of course, knew the path in which to travel. He knew where to take them, how to take them into it, through it, and out of that valley, just as the psalm says. In verses 5 and 6, if you look at the last two verses, you will notice that the sheep are now actually out of the valley. They're not in it anymore. And they're dining at the Lord's table. So he's not talking about sheep anymore. He's talking about us, specifically believers, those who trust in God. He said, those who trust in God, he says, the shepherd, once again, led them out of the valley and they are enjoying plenty and bounty. They're enjoying security. They're enjoying comfort and blessing and provision. As believers, we know that Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. That's John chapter 10, verse 11. He, as the good shepherd, leads us into these valleys that we must go through. That don't surprise him, that don't shock him. He knows it's coming. We had our plans, but he guides our steps. These valleys are present in this sin-filled world. And often we go through them by ourselves, if you will, or as families or small groups, not always as a whole nation or world. But the Lord also leads us out of this valley. You know, life has a way of throwing curves at you or knuckleballs. We don't like them. Actually, if you're like me, sometimes you can get very frustrated. You can get angry. You can get upset. You can get dejected or depressed over them. They're out of our control. We don't like it. Plans get disrupted. Dreams get shattered. Tragedies strike. <laughs> Viruses invade our lives. And at that moment, life can seemingly be, that's it. Life is over. My life has ended because I can't have my social life anymore. I don't get my friends. I can't hang out with them anymore. These are the times where we're in this valley. It can be scary because we don't know what's coming next. This is where we must, as believers, trust in God. Trust in our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And anyone who, who doesn't know for certain who he is, you can put your trust in him. And know that he will lead you. He will take you and carry you and bring you out of this valley. He promises us. And the Lord does not lie and he does not change. He promises to be with us when we enter into this valley. He promises to go with us through this valley. And he promises to lead us out of that valley. And after we come out, we find that there's restoration, there's healing, and there is comfort. Our cup, if you will, overflows and it's flooding onto the saucer and pouring out. We have been anointed because we are chosen and beloved by him. 
when the unexpected trouble comes into our world, which it will, we must remember the words of Jesus Christ. Be encouraged by them as our good shepherd who walked this world just as we do. When he was here and serving and, and ministering to us, he walked and went through valleys like this in his life. Think of the valley that he had to go through when he went to the cross. Think of how lonely and scary that was. But he was led through that. And think about the first day of the week, the Sunday when he rose again. Life returns to what seemingly is bleak and perhaps seemingly dead where life has ended. No, he will lead us. And Jesus, as he served in, on this earth and ministered to us in the physical body so many years ago, he said this, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Yes, we as believers and those who trust in God, and anyone who doesn't, Turn to the Lord. Depend upon Him like you've never done before. Because we need to take heart and know that He has overcome the world. And because He has, we know we will get through this and there will be a spring when life returns in its fullness. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and ask that you would join and pray with me at this time. Father God, I do thank you for giving us your word through David, a shepherd, so he understood what it meant that you are our shepherd. And I thank you, Lord, that you came and said, I am the good shepherd. Thank you that you are leading us right now. Yes, this is not the place we want to be, but we know from your promise that life will return and be even better. There are great blessings ahead. We can't see them. We don't know what they are. But Lord, you do. You're not surprised. You know what you are doing. And so we trust in you. And we know we will come through this. Thank you for being faithful and for being our good shepherd. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for um, joining us. I certainly ask God's blessing upon you and continue to look to him, continue to pray, read his word, be encouraged because God is faithful. And remember, God is in control.